Conversations around the pandemic and nostalgia are usually centered around the last few moments of innocence we shared. Seeing Sonic in theaters, watching J-Lo and Shakira at the Super Bowl, and celebrating Parasite's Oscar win. So it might seem counterintuitive to discuss nostalgia and coronavirus disease 2019 and its early lockdown. But I have nostalgia for a very specific time during the pandemic, circa March 20th, 2020. A time between Animal Crossing New Horizons release and before the New York Times put 100,000 names on the front page. Having nostalgia for spring 2020 has made me reflect not just on that time period, but on the feeling as a whole. You've probably heard that fun fact that nostalgia started as a disorder, but in modern times, it is no way considered a mental illness. But I think it's important to bring up because so much of our nostalgia is commodified or weaponized, we would do well to think back to its roots. If anything else, and it reminds us that nostalgia, but even modern definitions, includes descriptions of melancholy. Because of this, part of me thinks there's a line between reminiscing and feeling nostalgic. Reminiscing is looking back on something fondly. Nostalgia is the feeling that comes when we realize reminiscing is all we can do. Nostalgia happens because what happens after isn't always quite so nice. Keep in mind, depending on the memory or vibe, the joy of reminiscing can overpower the melancholy. The fact it happened at all can make that nostalgic rush a positive and even pleasant experience. For example, healthy nostalgia is remembering fun times with a friend. You reminisce with them the next time you hang out. You don't want to go back to when you were younger, you just like your friend. However, the other side of that is when you're feeling nostalgic about some happy memories with a friend, say, from high school. But that memory is chained with the memory of drifting apart. You can't even find that friend on social media. You don't even know if they're doing okay. So enter the time in our lives when Animal Crossing New Horizons comes out. I brought up that issue of the New York Times COVID cover because that's what set this all off for me. When I was going through some things recently, I stumbled upon it, and the first thing I thought of was the week Animal Crossing came out. The shutdown officially started on March 15th, and then five days later, on March 20th, Animal Crossing New Horizons is released. Now, if you recall, on March 15th, some people were like, Nintendo, save lives. Release it early, we're stuck at home. This little phenomenon actually starts to illustrate just why I have a deep nostalgia for late March and April 2020. At the beginning of the lockdown, there seemed to be a plan. We're stronger together. We're gonna go into lockdown, support each other from home. The essential workers are heroes, people. Let's protect the essential workers. I'm looking at you, GameStop employee. <laughs> Remember that? We'll make our fun at home. And a big way we'll do that is we'll play Animal Crossing. This time of us all playing Animal Crossing from home at the start of the lockdown is, whether I like it or not, a core memory for me. Core memory unlocked. My housemates and I ate a lot of ramen and played a lot of Animal Crossing together in the living room. I actually got a ladder early because of that, so thank you, Gary. Could have done it without you. The online community for this game was fantastic. Nintendo's shoddy online infrastructure be damned. Friends I miss seeing were on my island. I was seeing their personality in a very unique way. And this probably wouldn't have happened if not for the pandemic. People who do not play games the way that I do and my partner did, probably you listening, were suddenly sinking hours into video games. In fact, I wasn't even going to get Animal Crossing. A few days before the start of the official lockdown, I started Skyrim again. But the FOMO, the solidarity of looking for something to do together, apart, put Animal Crossing in my hands and millions of others. I've put close to 400 hours into Animal Crossing. I know people literally have thousands, but if you remember, I wasn't going to play it at all. This was a hard time, but this was a hardship shared together. You know, it's like when you get in trouble with your friend and you get punished together. Yeah, getting punished sucks, but... I don't know, you're together at least. It's almost a fond memory. 
But it turned out this was all just an illusion. I was in my bubble, my Animal Crossing bubble. See, it turns out this wasn't a lockdown together. This is oppression on an individual level. Turns out more people on my island were wearing masks than in my rural hometown. I remember the exact photo. After finishing my chores at Animal Crossing, getting on my laptop to look at the latest news, I couldn't believe what I saw. Protest. Protest for what? You can't protest the virus away. Seeing the photos of protesters pounding on the glass of a government building in Ohio, like zombies, immediately burst my illusion. I guess we weren't in this together. And like everything else in my adult life, it's just another fight between the left and right. I was almost afraid to open Animal Crossing and learn that Grizz is actually in the MAGA crowd and he thinks I'm a cuck. Nurses weren't heroes, they're liars. My right to not wear a mask has no bearing on essential workers. Fuck them. I thought we were in it together, but now it's just another entry in the soul-draining culture wars. Remember, nostalgia is usually melancholic because something has been lost. Oh. My burst illusion was completely shattered and vaporized on May 24th, 2020, when I opened the Sunday paper and was greeted with those 100,000 names. I think for a lot of us, this was when Animal Crossing turned from a fun escape to a necessary escape for our mental health. Togetherness or not, people were dying. We were failing to prevent the pandemic. People were going to continue to die. The only place safe from the pandemic was an Animal Crossing. So either way, I guess thank God for Animal Crossing. I had my partner, we had our pets, and we had our islands. Yeah, that's silly. They're silly little islands. Man, thank God they're so silly. Four years of gameplay later, I can pick up Animal Crossing and not be hit with nostalgia. At this point, I'm just excited to play my game. In fact, I'm getting close to completing my art museum, thanks to Red. I've been working on that this whole time, and I'm in no rush, thanks to Red. But when springtime rolls around and I'm playing Animal Crossing, I do get nostalgic for the start of the pandemic lockdown. Anytime COVID comes up, I think of Animal Crossing and that lockdown period, and I get nostalgic. Because of that, it's been helpful to take a dive into why I get those feelings. When you get nostalgic for something, dive into it. Think, why am I nostalgic for this specific time? What were the feelings that brought happiness in this time? And the harder part that we tend to avoid is, why did those feelings go away? How can I move on, recapture a different feeling, and how can I find happiness now? I guess reflecting on this has made me realize it's good to use nostalgia to move forward. Doing this reflection has taught me to have a healthy relationship with nostalgia. I'm not fighting the feelings, I'm just trying to understand them now. And I have goals of not letting my nostalgia exploit my bank account, but I also have this bigger role to add thankfulness to the feelings of nostalgia. I'm thankful they happened. I want to turn these feelings of nostalgia into feelings of thankfulness. Because what I learned is I'm thankful I had Animal Crossing in my life at that point. I'm thankful Grizz doesn't even know what MAGA or COVID is. He's just my virtual old grumpy bear friend. I'm thankful it made me realize I had friends to share the enjoyment of Animal Crossing with. I had real and virtual friends in a shitty time. And sometimes that's enough. Thank you.